What if I told you I experienced burnout two years into my career as a software developer? It was not fun, and if I could tell myself one thing, it would be, it's okay not to be okay. Hey everyone, my name is Raymond Chong, and my pronouns are he slash him, and I'm a technical educator here at Shopify for the Dev Degree program. And what Dev Degree is, it's a work integrated learning program where interns work part-time here at Shopify while learning at one of our partner universities. Here's a quick one minute glimpse into what Dev Degree is all about. Hi, this is Dev Degree. Explained in a minute. Dev Degree is a three to four year learning program that earns students a computer science degree while also getting hands-on experience at Shopify. We call it work integrated learning. Thanks to our university partners in the US and Canada, you're able to balance classroom time and hands-on time working on development teams, allowing you to truly master skills working on Shopify products and making an impact. And the Shopify team is there to support you every step of the way. You get access to mentors and technical instructors who help you navigate not just software development, but also the professional world. You'll learn how to work on a team while sharpening your unique talents. The best part? The best part? The best part? Dev Degree pays for your tuition and gives you a salary for your work. So in the end, you graduate with more than a degree. You graduate with a resume. You might be wondering, what is a technical educator? You can think of me like a teacher working with interns who recently finished high school or switch careers and help build their technical foundation from the ground up. Before joining Shopify, I was a backend developer building APIs and breaking things along the way. So far, I've worked with over 60 interns. And what I love about this job is just seeing them grow year after year. And when we catch up, they always share with me what they learn and the fun they're having on their teams. Their excitement reminds me of when I first started my software development job. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you about something personal how I burned out in that job, what I wish I did differently, and the seven strategies I'm using today. This is my guide to mental health. Before we begin, I want to note that I am not an expert on mental health. This is anecdotal, and not a suggestion or prescription on managing mental health. It was late 2017, and I got my very first software development job at a retail e-commerce company. At that time, I was excited to start, make an impact, and prove that I belong in tech. When I first started my job, the imposter syndrome started rushing in. I was very afraid of screwing up. Like, did I really belong in tech? I haven't touched Java in years. Will they be judgmental? Fortunately, everyone's friendly and helpful. Don't get me wrong, it was a huge relief, but I still felt like an imposter. It was my first job, and I was feeling overwhelmed and completely outside my comfort zone. Everyone had more context and experience than me. I felt like each comment someone put on my pull request might expose me as a fraud. I was afraid of showing weakness. And finally, I was just too hard on myself, and I kept apologizing to my colleagues, even though I did nothing wrong. I thought I was not living up to their standards, and I didn't even know how to or even when to ask for help when I struggled. But after a while, I got more and more comfortable and less afraid of screwing up. So how did I deal with it? I had a chat with my lead often about it. They were very helpful and very understanding. It made me feel less like an imposter and more like a contributing member of the team. Around the six months mark, the imposter syndrome kicked in again. I began working on a different project, and at the same time, my lead went on paternity leave. I had no mentor for the project, and my director just left the company. Pretty much, my support network was gone. My lead got replaced with a technical consultant I don't report to directly. I started feeling like an imposter again, picking up bad habits like not giving myself a break, being hard on myself, and not knowing when to ask for help. I didn't know who to talk to or even how to deal with it. Instead, I just focused on getting my work done. 
Months later, I got moved again to another team. It was fine for a bit, but I struggled with a ticket I greatly underestimated. At first, I spent daytime only working on it. Then, it included nights. Then, weekends. I was struggling and burning out. I honestly should have taken a break and tackled it when I was more awake than working into the night. The one-on-ones with my lead became irregular and spontaneous, and the imposter syndrome made me afraid to ask for help until I had a complete solution. Once I finished the ticket, I was really burned out and felt like I did a really bad job. At that point, I really thought I did not belong in tech. Instead of healing, the habits I got during that project stayed with me and continued working into the nights and weekends. My level of stress negatively impacted my productivity, my eating habits, and I struggled setting healthy boundaries. I got to this unhealthy point from a combination of posture syndrome, not having consistency, or a strategy for my one-on-ones, and by forming unhealthy habits instead of one that reduces burnout. I'm not feeling this way because I'm a fraud. I'm feeling this way because I'm learning and growing, and that's normal. It's a sign of growth, and we'll experience imposter syndrome throughout our careers. Nowadays, I learned to accept that it will never go away, but we can reduce it and take it as a sign of growth. Here are my tips on how I reduce the imposter in me. Number one, keep a win list. The win list contains all my wins over the years, like talking at Codeland. These wins allows me to reflect back and realize I'm still growing and learning. Number two, give yourself positive affirmations. As you saw with my burnout, I was stressed and still hurting myself, which doesn't help at all. A good mentor of mine told me to give myself positive affirmations like, you got this, or you're awesome. On my wall, I wrote a positive affirmation to help set a positive mindset whenever I'm about to start work or just feeling down. I'll read out loud the positive affirmation I wrote on my wall. You got this. It was one of the best things I have ever done. Number three, set talking points with your lead or interns for one-on-ones. The purpose of one-on-ones is to see how you are doing and how the lead can help you be successful in your job. You're in charge of owning those one-on-ones and your own development. The talking points will help guide your conversation with your lead. During my one-on-ones, this is actually a template that I use. What do you want to talk about in this one-on-one? Your talking points could be anything from social to constructive feedback on the work you're doing. For example, how am I doing? Can you check this um, piece of code just to ensure that it's of quality? Or how can I improve from this? Remember, it's your dedicated time to work with your lean and show visibility into the work you are doing. And the next thing I will also put into my template is what are the next steps? After discussing with your lean, what actions do you need to do? This will get filled during the one-on-one. It's also okay if it doesn't get filled at all, as not every one-on-ones will need to have next steps. Finally, if your lead doesn't do consistent one-on-ones with you, don't wait for them. Instead, book a recurring block on their calendar. With interns, my one-on-ones are actually peer programming sessions with a set agenda. For those unfamiliar with peer programming, it's a way for two people to work together to share context. The interns I work with are able to feel ownership in our pairings, and this template helps them by defining the agenda ahead of time. What do you want to pair on today? Have them set the agenda, let us know in advance what they need to work on. It also helps us prep and ensure our time working together is not used on one person prepping. And the next one I will ask them is, who's driving today? Me, you, or both? You can go with the flow, but everyone's different. Some likes to drive more, some like to be the navigator, where they like to be driven. Now, let's look at burnout. If you want to reduce burnout, look for these signs. You are feeling stress. You're overwhelmed because the ticket that you're working on 
might be a lot more complicated than you anticipated, and you've been working on it for a while. You're also anxious because you're afraid to ask for help. You're feeling like you failed. You know, you're very doubtful about yourself. Can I really do this? Do I really belong in tech? And also negative. You're dissatisfied with the work you're doing. You're not motivated at all at work, and you're not as productive as you used to be. And finally, you're lacking self-care. At home, you're not sleeping well or even eating well. I burn out working day and night without giving myself a break, or to know when to stop working. It wasn't healthy. So, how do I avoid burnout? Number four, define your core working hours. If you're working in a fully remote environment like I am, define and stay within your core hours. These can be flexible, but core hours are when you're working online. If I'm exhausted, drain from a lot of meetings, or it's a really nice day, I would call it early. I know if I continue working, I won't be as productive. It's all about setting your own personal boundaries. Nowadays, I stop working when my core hours are up, and would go have fun like going biking, gaming, or even watching shows. Number five, organize your day with a set agenda. When I started, I actually never organized my day. I was fine with it, but after a while, I learned I work way better in an organized manner. It helps to keep track of what I need to get done instead of relying on daily stand-ups and muscle memory. To keep organized, I use a lightweight version of bullet journaling. I write in a journal what meetings I have, what I'm going to be working on today, and any appointments I have. If any meetings get canceled, I cross it out. Whatever I can't get done for the day gets pushed to the next day. Number six, get one percent better each day. This great tip came from an awesome book I read by James Clear called *The Atomic Habits*. The book explains if we get one percent better each day, we continuously improve in small increments. By the end of the year, we'll be thirty-seven times better than when we started. But how? By focusing on the process rather than the end goal itself. For example, if one of my goals is to get less comments such as nitpicks and styling errors on my pull requests in six months' time, how will I get there? If I try to do this as fast as I can, I will likely burn out as I will be very hard on myself to write perfect code each time. Instead, I'll create a consistent habit by following a routine. The routine could look like this. Before I request reviewers, I check to see that all test passes. The code I've written has enough test coverage. I follow team style guide. I also provide context to the reviewers, which they may not have. And the more you do this, the more you will realize over time you improve a lot. And number seven, keep a social group going. Having social chats with others is super relaxing, especially if you're working fully remote and want some social interactions. I chat with a few folks I actually unburned it with by weekly, where we just talk about life. And whenever I feel like I'm unsure about something, I can always go to them for guidance and support. I also have another group chat going on that talks strictly about Taylor Swift. You can say we go into the meeting with a blank space. It's definitely tough talking about my experience burning out, but I want others to know that it's okay not to be okay. I hope the signs to look out for and the strategies I mentioned today help prevent burnout and reduce your imposter syndrome. Before we end it off, I want to know again that I am not an expert on mental health. This is anecdotal and not a prescription or suggestion on managing mental health. Thank you very much for watching my talk today. To end it off, you got this.